After being disowned eight years ago, my family has invited me, my wife, 27 female, and daughter, one female, for Christmas. After getting conflicting advice from my friends, one of my buddies told me to post my dilemma here and see what random internet strangers would say. I, 25 male, am the youngest of four kids between my mom, 52 female, and dad, 54 male. My siblings are fake names, Michael, 31 male, Sarah, 28 female, and my twin brother, Casey, 25 male. For context, growing up, I was the black sheep of the family, and I knew that from a very young age. See, my family is full of athletes. My dad was a star basketball player for a D2 school. My mom played volleyball. Michael played soccer. Sarah played softball. And Casey was the star running back for the football team. I was never really interested in any of those physical sports, but rather I was interested in archery, which my family called a wimpy sport. My parents were always invested in my siblings and rarely ever attended my events to the point where I basically had to beg for them to come to my tournaments. Between the ages of 14 and 16, I had taken part in about 20 tournaments while my parents only showed up to one. I was never neglected by them, but they were never emotionally there for me as they were for my siblings, and as a teenager, I resented that. Whenever I tried to bring this up to them, they would always call me an attention seeker. But, however, this is not why I was disowned from my family. When I was 15, I began dating Amy, now 25 female, who was in the same grade as me at the time. After about six or seven months of dating, I introduced her to my folks and my siblings, and they really liked her. I know I was young, but I could see myself having a future with her. Almost two years later, one of Amy's ex-friends told me that she had been cheating on me for a couple of months. At the time, I didn't know who the guy was, but after confronting her, she told me that it was my twin brother. She basically told me that while at first she loved me, the love she had for my brother surpassed that. Later that day when I confronted Casey at home, I was so enraged that I sucker punched him and knocked him out. I admit that I should not have gotten violent, but years of resentment towards him and the rest of the family just burst open. In exchange for my family not pressing charges on me, as I could have been tried as an adult in court, I was sent to live with my paternal aunt, 48 female, who at this point was estranged from the family and lived in another city about two hours away. From then on, I have not had any contact with them. At first it was tough, but later on, with support from my aunt and her husband, 48 male, I moved on from wanting a relationship with them. I transferred to a different high school and attended a university in my aunt's city and graduated as an electrical engineer. I later met my wife and got married to her. I, at the time of my wedding, thought about inviting them, but went against it because I did not want any sort of drama at my wedding. From that point, me and my wife bought a house an hour away from my aunt and were blessed with the daughter a year ago. About a week ago, I received a Facebook message from my mother and father wanting to reconnect over Christmas at their house. I told them I would consider it as I possibly have other plans, but would give them a clear answer soon. Later on, both Michael and Sarah sent me friend requests, which felt weird to me. My wife has told me that if I decided to go, she and my daughter would spend Christmas at my father-in-law's house, so she does not have to deal with unwanted stress, as she is two months pregnant, and I agree with her. My question to those reading this is that should I go and try to reconcile with my family, or should I not? I am very conflicted on what to do. On one hand, they perhaps feel bad about what they did to me and want to apologize for what they did, but on the other hand, perhaps if I go there, they will try to make me apologize to Casey, which I do not want to. Any advice would be helpful. Hi there guys, it's been a rough two weeks, but thank you all for the advice and support. This is going to be a really long post. I wanted to post earlier, but some things got in the way. Two days after Christmas, my wife began to experience unbearable pain in her abdomen area, and she hardly could stand on her two feet. Me and my sister, 30 female, rushed her to the hospital, where we found out that my wife suffered a miscarriage and that the fetus had to be removed right away. Honestly, the worst part for me was explaining to my wife what had happened. Due to complications surrounding the operation, my wife was forced to stay for two more days. Honestly, I have been trying to stay strong for my wife and my daughter, but honestly, I am struggling right now. I began to do some digging into my family to try to figure out why they have reached out. Michael is a corporate lawyer who works for a major company in my hometown. 
by looking through his Facebook page. He has two daughters and was married to his wife in 2016. Sarah appears to be married to a doctor. She herself eight years ago was studying to be a nurse. And they have a son together. I have a friend who lives in my hometown and has parents who are friends with my parents. When I asked her about Sarah, she told me that Sarah had divorced her first husband, the one she was dating eight years ago, after he had committed mail fraud. Casey got married to Amy right after high school, and together they have two kids together. I could not exactly figure out what he and his wife does for a living through Facebook, but judging that they bought a big house last year in the midst of a pandemic tells me they are not really struggling. My dad seems to be going through a midlife crisis, and mother is really into the wellness community. I then began to list the reasons of why they wanted to possibly reach out to me now. Money. Unlikely. Because eight years ago, my parents' combined salary was higher than my wife and my salary. And given that my siblings are not struggling financially, makes me think money is not the reason. 2. Organ donation. Could be the case, but seems unlikely. But a Redditor said that it could be that Casey, given he is my twin, would be my most likely match. And I think it's unlikely because he was tagged in a Facebook post skiing just a week before Christmas. Regarding my daughter. They could possibly be reaching out to me to have a relationship to my daughter, but I honestly am not sure. My daughter is not the first granddaughter for my parents, so I do not know why they would want to meet her. They most likely found out my daughter existed because my wife's Facebook account was public. She has since privated her account. I then contacted my aunt, the estranged one who took me in, informing her about the situation, and she explained to me why they were reaching out to me after all this time. To understand the situation, you need to understand why my aunt was estranged. My paternal grandpa, 79 male, and grandma, 76 female, had four children. My dad was the second oldest and my aunt was the third. My aunt, after college, came out to her parents as bisexual and began dating her girlfriend. My grandparents immediately disowned her and refused to have any contact with her. However, about four years ago, my grandpa began to reach out. About a month ago, my grandpa had been asking about me and what I was doing in life and whether I was married or had kids. My aunt responded by calling my grandpa out for wanting to know about me after he supported Casey for what he did. That is when the whole situation changes. My grandpa told my aunt that because I had cheated on Amy with one of her close friends, I deserved to be estranged. My grandpa is a religious nut, so he looks down on cheating. He had been told by my family that after the friend who I allegedly cheated with confessed to Amy, she went to Casey and Sarah for support and comfort. And when I found out about this, I confronted and brutally attacked Casey and Sarah. While Sarah was the one who tried to break me and Casey apart, I did not lay a finger on her, and I did not brutally attack Casey. When my aunt was telling me this, my jaw dropped. I could not believe that they hated me so much that they were willing to make up a terrible lie about me and spread it around. My aunt later told grandpa the full truth on what truly happened and my aunt told me he was shocked because he always thought Casey was a good kid. My grandpa then asked my aunt for my number, which she declined to give. I figured out why my parents and siblings wanted to get in touch with me. It turns out my grandpa had told my parents and my siblings that if they did not apologize for what they did to me and have me over for the family Christmas dinner, they would be cut off from his will. For context, he is a multimillionaire. So that is why they reached out to me, not to apologize about how they all wronged me in the past, but rather because if they did not, they would not get anything from grandpa. What a bunch of greedy people. After hearing about this from my aunt, I decided to block all of them. Why should I respond to them? At this point, all of them are dead to me. I have a wife to support after what she went through and a family that respects me and my in-laws. However, this does not end here, as three days after New Year's Eve, I received a call from an unknown number on my work phone. I am used to getting calls from unknown numbers because of my career, and when I picked up, I heard my grandfather's voice. He most likely got my number from the company website. The first thing he did was apologize for not trying to get in contact with me for the past eight years. He told me he was sorry that he could not be there for important events such as my graduation, my wedding, and the birth of my daughter. I was not really close to him before, so him cutting me off did not bother me. Later in the call, he told me he was so disgusted with the rest of my family that he is cutting them off from his will and adding me to it. 
I honestly do not know how to feel about that, as the money would be helpful, but at the same time, I do not want him to use this as a way to force a relationship between me and my daughter. We talked for about a half an hour. The way the call went made me think that perhaps I could build a good relationship with my grandpa, but then he told me something that got me really pissed. He told me that he was disappointed and that my daughter had not taken the family name. For context, after I got married to my wife, the issue of the last name to use as a couple came up. For some legal reasons, I was unable to change my last name to my wife's name, but we decided as a couple that all of our future children would have her last name. I, at this point, unloaded on my grandpa, calling him a senile old man and many other hurtful things, and told him to never contact me again. The audacity of this man to say that after what I went through is something. I will not let him use the money I receive in the will to control me. Even if I receive the money, I will donate it to a local charity, but he is a man of false promises, so this is unlikely. These past few weeks have been really tough for me, and I hope to make it to the other side. My wife has privated her Facebook account, and her in-laws have done the same. What they do to try to contact me is beyond me. Hell, they would probably hire a private detective to try to find me. I believe they do not know where I live, but you never know. I have thought of getting a restraining order, but given that there are lawyers within the family means getting a restraining order will be hard. You know what's funny? OP's number one reason of why they wanted to reach out was actually money. They appeared to have it all on social media, but in the end, they only wanted to reconnect because of the grandpa's money. I hope they get nothing. Yeah, if an old millionaire wants to leave his fortune to me, I will change my name to Crapbag, no questions asked. Yeah, seems a little overreactive. I personally wouldn't care if my grandkids had my name or not, but I can understand why someone would be disappointed. Well, sort of. Maybe in an academic sense. If Grandpa didn't make a huge deal over it, I think OP went a little too far. I get that, however, because he has been mistreated for so long. I, 34 female, have a pretty successful career in France, and I'm doing pretty well for myself. I also have a twin sister and younger brother, 34 female and 28 male, who I thought were also doing well. With my busy life, I don't get to come to the States and see my family often, but when I do, we have a good time, since we have a good relationship. Last week, I came to visit my family and planned to stay until February, since my job will be remote for a bit. It was then when I noticed everything was a bit weird. When I walked through the door, my sister's kids, two male and one female, were excited to see me, and the oldest kept saying, Mama back, Mama back. I thought they were just confused since we look alike and they've never seen us in the same room together. However, my brother-in-law, 36 male, pulled me to the side and told me how my sister had left him late November. Of course, I was shocked and asked him how him and the kids were doing. He explained how they're too young to understand everything but would like if I extended my visit and pretended to be their mom since he doesn't want them to experience so much hurt so young. I instantly told him no and carried on with my day. I thought this issue was put to rest until yesterday when my mom, 56 female, told me how she was extremely disappointed in me for not helping out my brother-in-law and thought I should at least try for a bit since he's in distress. I honestly don't know what to do. My family's a bit old-fashioned and wants me to help my brother-in-law but it'll be weird for me pretending to be my sister and their mom. I haven't been able to get in contact with her yet, but brother-in-law said one of his friends might have seen her a few towns over, so I'm going to try to follow that lead. And I don't think he gave her. He's pretty old-fashioned. 